Let's check on this. It's not definitely not below zero the amount of money that will be spent on the omnibus and the new the new uh, <laughs> spending thing that was just passed. I believe is one point seven one point eight something. It's trillions of dollars or eight trillion plus. Gabriella Hoffman joins us now to discuss this. Gabriella is a commentator with Young Voices and uh, analyzes this type of thing. Gabriella, welcome to your morning wake up on 1320 WILS. Happy Friday before Christmas. Good to join you to break down this insane amount of spending. This is crazy big. Now, for those people who wonder, they're, they're just if you're just going, well, yeah, but they got to do it so we can still keep the government running and yada, 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 and keep the you know park rangers employed and all of that, there's stuff attached to this thing that uh, I, I, I found this list of pork, and it always happens there's pork involved with every bill, but this is insane. Um, but here we go. Uh, explain this to us here, Gabriella. I think most of your listeners have noticed something if they've casually listened to politics. I've reported on politics for the better part of a decade and followed these battles as closely as I can. And I've noticed there's a trend for Congress, including both members of party, not just Democrats, but Republicans are now guilty of these big spending bills, regardless of the president in power. And they have an inclination to pass these whopping gargantuan bills, back out with pork, other type of extraneous spending that has nothing to do with these type of bills, what they're truly supposed to be. This bill, I've heard, could be broken up into 12 different bills. <laughs> but we have oh, a $1.7 trillion bill that is 4,000-some-odd-plus pages. Most members of Congress and their staff have not read through this. And like Nancy Pelosi famously said, you have to pass it to find out what's in it in reference to right. Obamacare. There led to a lot of problems. So when you have these many, many illustrious pages of bills filled with pork, filled with extraneous spending that have nothing to do with keeping government working efficiently, raises a lot of concerns and eyeballs, and rightfully we're discussing it and the enormity of it as well. Yeah, well, and it, Republicans and Democrats both voted for this thing. Um, it was, what is it, 68-29, I think, was the thing. Here, let me give you a, a quote. I don't know if you saw this from Ron Johnson uh, from Wisconsin. He said, imagine your football team is losing 60 to nothing in the last few seconds, you kick a three-point field goal and call the game a big win for you. <laughs> he says Republicans are using this same analogy to argue that increasing defense spending in a 1.8 whatever trillion dollar bill is a big win. Um, yeah, we've averted a shutdown. Woohoo! But are Republicans rolling over? But like you know, I mean, it's both sides of the aisle here, like you said. But are they just rolling over? It seems like the case in, like, previous spending bills, a couple of Republicans did not support because they recognized it would contribute to inflation. But when it's stacked with certain provisions they like, they completely ignore the implications that could stem from this. I anticipate, and I think most observers anticipate, this could contribute to the inflation we're seeing right now. And people obviously are seeing less money come in. They're seeing products shrink, shrinkflation, as they're calling it. And people are having to scale back, and these politicians are essentially playing with taxpayer money. They're not really caring about spending, and and if you say you're for tax cuts and then you ignore spending, you're inconsistent in your support for limited government like a lot of these Republicans are. And some of these Republicans are retiring, so they wanted to go out with a bang, which makes absolutely no sense when you're trying to think of stewarding people's money well. And we'll see within a few months, going back to this bill, that inflation is higher the economic malaise is going to be more persistent. And is it really going to impact things positively? No. Like I said, there are some great things in it if they were standalone bills, but when you stack it as part of this big monstrosity of an omnibus, it makes you look really disingenuous about caring about certain issues that are important and deserve to be weighed upon as individual bills rather than adding it as pork, something it has no bearing to. Without getting a whole big detail thing, because I want to give, I'm going to list a couple of the pork things just so people, it opens their eyes, because it opened my eyes. I had no idea this much junk, but what's the good? What's the, give me some of the good here. Uh, It's it's interesting to say, I'm not saying, uh, you know, every provision is great. I'm I'm saying like as a standalone bill, you could get more support for people. I'm trying to think. There's something about salmon conservation. Salmon conservation is great, but how does it have anything to do with defense spending? It doesn't. 
and it doesn't have to be the the number it it proposed. That's that's one I would say okay thing. If it was not part of an omnibus, you really shouldn't be able to justify or tie it in. And there's some other things that I would normally support as standalone bills, but they have a lot more money allotted to them, and they, like I said, nothing to do with defense spending. And to me, it it, it goes to show that these members of Congress are not focused on important issues if they're just stacking it into random bills. Just so, just to give you an idea, ladies and gentlemen, and we're not talking about government. You know, when you say the the spending, a lot of people, I think, think that the government's just sitting on a big pile of gold somewhere, and it it just doesn't affect them. This is your money, and it's generally your money that's already been spent a couple of times. It doesn't exist. They're just going to print more. Mm-hmm. Uh, five million dollars to the Universal Universal Hip Hop Museum in New York. We're paying for that. Uh, that's just one thing. But and I won't go through the whole list here. But this is just incredible. Uh, one point eight something trillion dollars. Um, so anyway, Gabriella, uh, we're going to be revisiting this here in. Uh, uh, well, you know we will down the line. Of course we will. Absolutely, because like I said. Like these other grotesque spending bills, they have been attributed to rising inflation very quickly, too, within months of passing. So this is what we should expect, unfortunately. And and they wonder why there's such great distrust in Congress. There's such low approvals, even. It's because they're pushing efforts like this to steamroll bills like this. (sighs) Gabriella Hoffman, let me just say Merry Christmas. And you, in the last 20 seconds, are you on the naughty or nice list? this year for Sam. I think I'm on the nice list. I've been I've been good. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, personal, I know, but there you go. Gabriella, thanks for being on your morning wake up. 1320 WILS. See you later.